Christ is risen. Christ is risen Good morning, happy Easter, and welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, we are a community in many places. If you are online today, wherever Easter morning finds you, uh, we are so glad to be with you. With joy, I look out and see whole pews of families, whether you are on break um, from college or visiting for the weekend. Um, if you're new to Mount Olivet, a special welcome to you as we gather together this morning and proclaim that death is not the end. In the Gospel of Matthew, you will hear a lot of drama. There are earthquakes and there are soldiers faking dead, all because the world cannot believe that death is not the end, that there is more. Yet, everyone meets this promise with terror and awe, and I think we do too. What is this resurrection in our lives all about? It's certainly for those who have passed away, but it's also given to us in the struggles and grief of our life to raise us up in this life and be a part of what God is doing. And so how that message touches each of you today, the spirit is at work as it lands on your heart, as it shapes us as a community to continue to proclaim God's love through Jesus. So if you're online, everything that you will need will be on the screen for us here at church. Your bulletin will guide the way. And uh, we are pulling out all the stops with the organ and the brass and uh, with hymns and prayers and uh, with this scripture story today. So with that, I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with our Easter litany. The earth is shaking. Our angels descending. The tomb is before us. Is the stone rolling back? It's bright as lightning blinding as the sun reflecting off the snow. But we need not tremble. Because the tomb is empty and we are called. Then to go with joy. Christ is risen.
together living God long ago faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus resurrection and the world was changed forever help us choose to keep faith with them that our witness may be bold our love deep and our eyes open to your movement in the world amen The scripture this morning is from the third chapter of Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness where Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Word of God, word of life. What do you see when you look at a simple tray of cheese and crackers? I realize this is a strange question to be asking on Easter morning when your thoughts may already be wandering on to brunch or to Easter egg hunts, but hear me out. One afternoon, a man went to see a dear friend and his wife who were both getting on in years. His friend's wife, in particular, was struggling and in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. He was so sad to notice that she was asking him the same questions over and over again. Finally, she asked, would you like some cheese and crackers? Well, the man, the visitor, immediately jumped up to help, but her husband warmed him off with a shake of the head, as if to say, let her do this one last thing for you. She returned with a tray of cheese and crackers, napkins, and small plates stopping in front of each of them until they took their share. 
The man, author Parker Palmer, saw that tray of cheese and crackers so lovingly prepared and offered as communion, as the bread of life, as the wine of love, as cups flowing over. Never, he wrote, has a cathedral seen a moment more holy than this. How is it possible to see the loss of a beloved's memory and a simple act of hospitality as a cathedral of the holy? Perhaps the choice to see is ours to make. The resurrection story in Matthew's gospel is all about seeing. When given the opportunity, what will the disciples choose to see? What will we choose to see? The Marys are deeply grieving the death of Jesus, and nonetheless, they choose to go to the tomb to see for themselves. Unlike the guards who faint, the women see the angel as a divine messenger, leading them to further seeing. Come see the place where Jesus laid, the messenger says. Then go on to Galilee where you will see him again. It was a choice, wasn't it, that they would go to try to see him again. And then they go and they do see, though in a new way now. These women, these women are the unsung heroes of the Easter story. There are so many points at which the women could have chosen not to take the next step to see the truth. Some of you, I'm, I'm sure, are familiar with a certain adage about marriage that says staying in love is a choice. I know, I know, as my husband will tell me, the wisdom only goes so far. Well, as I dwelled in the Easter story this week, I couldn't shake the thought that seeing the risen Christ at work in this weary world of ours through the power of the Holy Spirit is a choice each and every day. Like the Marys and the rest of the disciples and the great cloud of witnesses and saints of our faith, we all have a choice to see. Many of you know that I'm a second career pastor, and so I have to be vulnerable with you and honest and say that it took me decades to choose resurrection. Oh, I dabbled around the edges of my faith. I was a perpetual seeker of the holy, visiting churches far and wide, but never choosing to commit to one community to see what I might experience. For a long time, I believed faith was the accumulation of evidence I turned to smart books and to classes and to degrees to build up an intellectual life that would deliver understanding and faith. It was all a good and faithful part of my journey, but at a certain point I had to put a stake in the ground with these women. I had to use my voice. I had to choose resurrection hope over everything else. So as the dawn from on high breaks upon this Easter morning, we all have another opportunity to reflect on what we choose to see when we look inside the tomb and find it empty. See, the same forces that killed Jesus tried to tell the story that someone came by night while the guards slept and stole Jesus' body away. These same forces continue to try to convince us 
that to keep faith with a couple of grieving women and their account of the risen Jesus is a fool's errand. When you try to tell them that Jesus lives on and that grace and mercy and abundance exists for all, these same forces will tell you that it just makes the most sense to fear difference, to live for yourself, to live for just your family and not for the good of community. When you tell them about your great pain or loss or grief, they'll say, see, a loving God is just a work of fiction. When you show concern over the number of people living unhoused in the world or the latest of the latest school shootings, they will say, this is just the way it is. There's no use in writing injustice or protecting the vulnerable among us. Then when you point out all the helpers and the advocates and the people of good faith at work in the world, they will tell you that these efforts are too little, too late, and that whoever your whole self is, is somehow not enough. I could go on and on, but I believe that the same forces that killed Jesus on Good Friday are alive and well today, and they are threatened by the promise of resurrection. But I have a feeling that you are here this morning because you have felt an invitation from God to see differently. I'm not talking about the kind of seeing where the glass is half full. I'm not talking about putting on rose-colored glasses or watching that Hallmark movie that always resolves in a happy ending. Can you imagine how the disciples felt after seeing Jesus raised from the dead? Yes, there was joy, but there was also a mix of emotions. How were they supposed to put their lives back together and somehow figure out how to do what Jesus was telling them to do, when now even death was something they couldn't count on? No, the resurrection was not a happy ending that returned everything back to the way things were. It wasn't a happy ending, it was an up-ending that a people desperately needed to see, an upending that would reveal that God in death and in life and everywhere in between continues to be with us and is continually providing another beginning and another chance for grace and mercy and love to be known. And here's the other gospel truth that takes my breath away. Remember the great earthquake, the shining white angel descending from heaven, rolling back the stone, the guards struck unconscious, the larger-than-life drama being played out at the tomb. We might easily mistake that this was all necessary so that Jesus could rise from the dead. But by the time all of this happened, Jesus was already gone, walking out ahead of his disciples, making plans to see them again, making plans to strengthen their courage and faith, making plans to send them out to invite others to see. No, the stone wasn't rolled away by the angel to let Jesus out of the tomb. The stone was rolled away to let the witnesses in. And we are these same witnesses. Whether we choose to go in and see or not, the God of truth and mercy and forgiveness is already out on the loose, providing us with another chance to see and another chance after that. 
So my prayer for you and for me and for Mount Olivet on this Easter morning is really simple. And that is that we would be a people who choose to try to see the risen Jesus. And when we do see, and oh, how we will see, I pray that we will go and tell what we have seen to another. Rejoice and be glad. Christ is risen. God has always chosen you and this world. Now, what do you say? Amen. among us we confess confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the father and he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen and now may the peace of god be with you all for those online, you can type your piece in the comments and we will connect with you there. For us at church, 
to be able to do a turn or a dip and uh, both give and receive peace from those around you. God's so good to see you. with the offering for all the ways that you invest financially in Mount Olivet. Believe it or, or not, over this last year, because of you, we have paid off our million dollar mortgage and are now debt free, so you never know uh, what is around the bend. Um, we do have a Venmo, yeah, that's worth it. We do have a Venmo code if you'd like to give online. Um, Kids, there's a basket right behind me. All your dollars and coins go to feed hungry people. generous God in this meal you offer your very self and we give thanks for these gifts of the earth in the breaking of the bread, reveal us just the risen one in the pouring of this wine pour out in service through the world through Jesus our Lord amen <laughs>
God for your unfolding story since the beginning of time and for how your spirit of love moves stones, brings life from death, and gives us courage to take the next step and to witness to your love. Oh God, your intention from so long ago has been to come at the break of dawn to find us sitting in the shadows of death and despair, to break open the grave and to be with us. And so your spirit continues to gather your people, both here and online, to give us your real presence made known in simple elements like bread and wine, nourishing and shaping us and meeting us on the way, just as Jesus promised. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, send your spirit on us in this meal as we move from death to life. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are all welcome to receive Holy Communion wherever you are today, however you come, wherever you are in your faith. This is God's meal and God's grace is for us. And sometimes we just have to sit on the stone, the things that keep us from seeing, and that's okay. So in this meal, when you open your hands, God promises that you will see again whenever that is, and we do that as a community. If you are online today receiving communion wherever you are, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us at church, we will have three stations, two up the middle and one up this side aisle. The wafers are gluten-free, wine is red, and grape juice is lighter than color. So please come forward now. The feast is prepared.
Thank you. 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as we witness to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we pray at the end of each of my prayer petitions, I will say, risen Christ, and please respond. Hear our prayer. We come to you, O God, and we open our hearts and minds to your love and forgiveness. Let us pray. O God of love, on this Easter morning, we hear again that through the cross, death is not the end. Help us see and notice your presence in the ordinary details of our lives. You are creating in the world at every moment, leading us to new places, putting back together our broken pieces and connecting us with each other. We ask especially for your creating and healing presence to be in areas of conflict throughout the world and the scattered, unsettled places of our own lives. Risen Christ, we pray for those in need, O God, give shelter to the homeless, guide the unemployed to jobs, protect those who suffer abuse or neglect, and bless the poor. Bring friends to the lonely, food to the hungry, sobriety to the addicted, and reconciliation to the estranged. Bring healing to all who are sick, comfort all who grieve, and peace to those who are dying. Risen Christ, we pray for faith, faith to trust that when we doubt, when we don't know com what comes next, and when we are in our deep grief, remind us, O oh God, that you hold us in life and in death and that you do have a plan and a purpose in a future for each of us and for the world. Risen Christ, and we pray for all of us gathered here today, free us from fear and renew us in faith. Send your bold spirit of resurrection to set us upright, to live and love. Help us be your hands and feet in schools and workplaces, neighborhoods, families, friendships, and anywhere else you would have us go, risen Christ. With the faithful saints of all time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I send you off today um, to all the places that you will celebrate with your families and all the encounters that you have in the world. Um, may you be able to see resurrection, and when you don't, have the faith to know that it is coming. And just for announcements, these beautiful flowers that adorn our chancel area have been given in memory or honor in celebration, and you will see that in your bulletin. So thank you all who have given these. If you choose, you can pick them up after church today at 1230. The church will be closed tomorrow. Um, so if you don't pick them up today, we'll see you on Tuesday for that. So I invite you to stand and we close together in song.
Now receive this blessing. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead, strengthen with you the Spirit and bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.